Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero with J Man Seminars, and welcome to Millenni Who Talks, baby, episode number 30. We're here with the form of Pierre, and we're talking all things real estate. If you're tuning into the show for the first time, this is real stories from real estate rock stars from all across the planet Earth. And our only goal is to inspire others with their real life stories. So we're here with if, if Forma Pierre, a.k.a. Pierre. We're just going to call you that for today, right? That's what you like to be called? Yeah, no, nah, that's perfect. That's the reason why I went with that, because the first <laughs> name just gets you tongue twisted. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get right into it to those who are tuning in right now. Uh, if this is your first broadcast, if you like anything you hear while we're talking, just type it in the comments below. Uh, wherever you're listening from. So if you're in Queens, if you're in Rochester, if you're in Pennsylvania, put your hometown where you're listening from and whether you're listening live or whether you're listening on the playback. If you want to subscribe to the show, you just have to type Millenni Who in the comments below. And if you like anything that's said, just type it in the comments, whatever little many nuggets that Pierre is going to be throwing at us today, type it in the comments below and I can bring it up to the screen so everybody can see it. So, Mr. Pierre, in the beginning, back home in Trinidad, let's start there. Humble beginnings. Oh, uh, man, yeah. Trinidad. Um, you know, I grew up in Trinidad. A lot of people ask me the question, you know, is it Trinidad and Tobago? No, it's just Trinidad. I grew up in Trinidad. <laughs> you know, Tobago is like a whole nother place on the other side. But, um, yeah, so I grew up in Trinidad um, over there. You know, I was just talking to my wife yesterday something ironic since i was uh the age of 16 i was an entrepreneur i don't think i ever really had a traditional job um i was in school i played soccer and when it was i think when i was around 13 i had to choose between doing like an academic job academic uh, course or to do you know something uh tailoring so i, I chose tailoring because i was like you know i'm just gonna go ahead and make some clothes so i started tailoring since i was the age of uh, 14. And at 15 years old, I was making clothes. I was selling them on the streets. Um, I didn't know what the word entrepreneur means. As a matter of fact, I didn't know what entrepreneur means till I was like in my late 20s, no 30s actually. <laughs> like I didn't even know what entrepreneur means. All I knew was I had to get money, and um, so I would make the clothes and I would get out there and sell them. And you know, Trinidad was great to me. And then I got an opportunity to come over here, and I took it, and I started making clothes over here. But the problem was. Clothes was so much cheaper in the United States. I was like, I can't be, you know, like you could go to Walmart or you could go to the flea market and you could get a pants for like $2. I'm like, I can't sit and sew a pants for $2. I got to right. get something else to do. So, yeah, that was the end of my career after I came over here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's how I started off in, in Trinidad doing tailoring. So how old were you again when you came over, 16? Um, Yeah, I, was, I, I came over when I was about 16 years old, yeah. I was going back and forth. I was going back and forth um, from 16. I stayed after I got married. And what was what was that transition like? I mean, coming did you come right to New York where you live currently or were you someplace else? Yeah, no, I I'm always lived in Queens, uh, South Jamaica. I grew up in South Jamaica, you know. Um, so since I was 16 years old, I was over there. Grew up on the streets on, on 115 and Sutphin. If you know anything about South Jamaica, it's tough. Uh, yeah. So, um, but we grew up on the streets and, and, you know, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. It was a great experience growing up over there and I've lived there for God knows however long. And then from Jamaica, I moved over to Springfield. So it's like about a five minute drive. So technically I never really left. I just went to the other side. So <laughs> I still live here now. So. Right. And, and, and for those who don't know, uh, New York City is very much like you might think, where it's if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. But part of that is having that street smarts and that and that knowledge that there's people that are always going to test you. Right. And, and having that street smarts of, you know, growing up South Jamaica, Queens, like, you know, when there's a hustle and you know, when there's, you know, there's there's real prospects and real clients. Would you agree? Absolutely. You know, um, and again, you know, growing up in New York is one thing, but growing up in South Jamaica, some totally different. You know, you got to be sharp. You got to be wise um, on that streets, you know, all the time because there's always somebody trying to do something. There's always somebody trying to do something under the table. Right. Um, you know, and again, where we grew up, you know, it was considered the hood. It was tough. 
Um, I remember when I first got my car, I got my car shot a few couple of times, not me, but, you know, come outside, you see bullet holes in the car, you know, and it's like, okay, just go get the next windscreen, you know, the junkyard was down the block. So, uh, but it was tough over there. And, 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 and um, like you said, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. And that's a true staying because um, it took a lot of, you know, it took a lot of uh, strength to be able to survive over there where we grew up. So then at what age? Or, or what did you do when you stopped tailoring? You're like, man, the, the profit margins aren't here in the United States. Like, what was your your work experience like prior to real estate? And then what prompted you to get into real estate? Ah, uh, great. You know, um, so so when I figured out that I can compete with these two dollar jeans, <laughs> these five dollar t-shirts, I'm like, man, this ain't got no money. You know, <laughs> and I had one kid at the time, so um, there was this guy. Uh, it was a Nigerian guy. He had a warehouse in Queens, right in Queens here. Um, and, you know, so I would, I would go and work for him and, and ship to Nigeria. And, you know, all it really was was that people would bring in boxes and then I would shrink wrap it and wrap the boxes. And it was a lot of hard work, man. Like your back was always hurting and all kinds of stuff. I was like, man, this is a lot of work. So, but, you know, I did it for about, I did it for about two years. That was the only job that I ever had in my entire life only job where you're working for somebody i work for somebody i just want to put it out there when everybody to know i had one job i did it <laughs> for two years and i and again didn't know what the word entrepreneur means all i knew was there had to be something better for me like just working wrapping boxes just had to be something better so eventually that job came to an end um i had a little disagreement with the <laughs> with the office manager let's just put it that way and, um, you know, foolishly, I quit, you know, didn't know what I was going to do. So when I quit, now I have one kid, I have a wife, and I got bills, and I'm living in New York City. So, you know, my uncle, he used to do elect electrical work. So I went to him, and he was like, you know, I was like, yo, can you give me a job? He's like, do you know anything about electrical? I was like, no. He's like, well, you know, I don't know if I can give you a job. I'm like, man, just let me, let me carry your stuff around. So I started carrying his stuff around, his electrical tools. And within about eight months, I learned hands down how to wire an entire house, right? So and the reason why I don't call that a job because it was my uncle and he was just paying me whatever he could pay me whenever. So that's not a job. That's just me working for my uncle. It's totally different than a job. Job right. is where you get paid a certain amount of money every single week. This is my uncle. When I get paid, I got paid. <laughs> so, <laughs> so eventually, um, I started wiring the houses. I was doing good. He started breaking me off some good money. And, but what, if you know anything about electrical, you got to be pulling wires through the oh, walls. Yeah. And every day I'll be pulling wires through the walls and my hands begin to get like busted up really bad, you know, really rough. So when I come home and I'm trying to hug my wife and I'm trying to like, you know, give her a nice little rub, she's like, ew, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> and you do not want your wife to say, ew, what's that? Okay. And with my hands, you know, with my hands. So. Yeah. I said to her, I said, look, listen, there has to be a better way. So one day I was in this house and I was wiring the house. And, you know, my, my knuckles are bloody. I'm sitting there. In comes this guy, really nice looking real. This is how I got into real estate. He was really nice, dressed really nice, smooth looking guy. So I was like, yo, homie, what's up, man? How you, you know, how you looking nice like this? And then he was like, he was like, oh, I'm in real estate. And he was just like that. I was like, you're in real estate? You know, so tell me about that. He didn't really want to tell me much. You know, I'm right. sitting there. He drove up in a car, man. I had like a 1980 something Astro van, you know, with like three wheels on it. Where I had to lean to the left in order for it to not, you know, fall down or whatever. And yeah. he pulls up in like a Maserati or something, man. Back in 19, this was like 2005, man. Like, you know, you got money like that. So to make the story real sweet, I, I went home and I was like, I told my wife, I was like, babe, this dude came in looking real nice, driving a real nice car. He was in real estate, but he wanted to tell me what to do. So I went to the newspaper back in those days as newspapers. So is any millennials mm -hmm. looking at it? There was newspapers. And whenever we wanted a job, we went to what? The classified ads. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I went there. I got my little pen and I was in the classified ads looking to see, you know, about real estate. Come to find out, I saw an ad, Jay, man. Here's what the ad says. The ad says this specifically. Learn how to make money in real estate with no license, no money no experience i ran outside in the living room i was like baby girl i think i just got a job i qualified <laughs> so 
so so she was like she was like what i was like man they, they, man no i ain't got no money i definitely ain't got no experience and i sure enough ain't got no license so you know shoot i got a job and uh i went to the real estate office and i was there and and to make the show real sweet i was there they showed me a couple of stuff and uh, within the first year um i got like the salesperson award for just like getting a but i didn't get a license by the way i was just what i was doing was um, I was just bringing in, bringing in prospects. I would go out, door right. knock, and be like, "Yo, you want to sell? You want to sell? You want to sell?" And you know, sure enough, they come in, they do it, and then they break me off some money. And then I said, "You know what? It's time to get in the big leagues." When I got my license, I've been doing it 14 years now. Never stopped. Never, never wavered. Never, never shifted. This, this was, this was for me. So, so in in your first year after you were licensed, you know, because you started out like we call that a lead hawker. Um, lead generator of sorts. I know that that's big in New York because there there was just so much to prospect. What uh what were some of the challenges you encountered like in that first year being so young? Because you we're the same age, you know. So you were about twenty five or so when yeah. you started, right? Yeah, yeah. So I would imagine when like what were the challenges in the first year? Uh, not everybody's an overnight success and makes you know millions of dollars in real estate. This well, month. well, just just an FYI. You know these awards that they give you they don't tell you that you don't get money with these awards you just get a award. you're like you got top producer award but you know your money is not top producer you know what right. I'm saying? You so i got a, i got an award for you know i used to bring in a lot of people but they were breaking me off like a little bit of money but there was no skill all i was doing was and this was like in 2005 okay anybody could have made money in 2005 just an fyi like you, if you were breeding you were making money so i would just walk up to anybody in the streets like you want to buy real estate they be like, yeah, okay, great, come. And then they will give them these nasty loans, which I didn't know about, these jumbo loans, these piggyback loans, and these subprime loans, and you know, cash back money and all of that stuff. So I would get people because the sales pitch was easy. Hey, you want to buy? Yeah. I can show you how to buy with no money and get $20,000 $20, cash back at closing. Anybody was buying. And once you had a 700 credit score, so, so, so there was no skill involved in that. But then when I got the real estate license and I learned the law, I stopped making money because now what I was doing wasn't right when I didn't have the license. Now I had the license. I had to obey the law. And man, that was hard because, uh, you know, there was nobody to show me how to do it right, the right way. So the challenges that I had was um, no leadership, no guidance. Um, there was no coaching. There was no hand me down knowledge. There was nobody to take me by the hand and say, don't do this. You know, so, um, you know, even the lady, that was my broker. I remember coming to work one day and she turned the whole first floor into a nail salon. <laughs> a nail salon. Yeah. I'm talking about like in two days, like over the weekend, you come in and there was people doing nails. You spend an acrylic all over the place. And I'm like, yo, so, you know, where the conference room? Oh, no, you got to go upstairs for that. You know, so that's how I started. And it took me, just so that you know, it took me three years before I became a success. Um, you know, I didn't have the support of my wife in the beginning either. She, you know, there was one rule and one rule only. I love you. Do not speak real estate in this house. That was the rule for three years because I wasn't bringing in any checks, you know, and, and that was the challenge for me. Um, cash flow, leadership, guidance, and somebody to point me in the right direction. I, I you know, I really struggle with that. Oh, I like this. I love you, but don't speak real estate in the house. <laughs> yeah, that was the rule. Like, you, you cannot do it <laughs> you know so um but she changed her mind you know when the money started coming in just an fyi because she's in the business now so but what was what was the turnaround then after three years what what did you i know you're a student of the game right yeah. like you're constantly learning what what did you see in like a, in the first three years there that made the difference for you that helped to turn it around just kind of grinding it out yeah well yeah just hit and miss hit and miss hit and miss you know, massive failure, just massive failure. I failed so much. I spent money. I don't know. You've been along as long as me. You remember? Did you ever see a gadget called the Talking House? You remember that technology? Yeah. Yep. Spent the money on radio waves. That I bought that. I buy everything. I spent thousands of dollars on stuff that is still sitting downstairs in my basement. But that ultimately led to my success because I wasn't afraid of failing. 
you know, I got to the point where this has to work. Whenever I thought about quitting, I remember those days in, you know, running electrical wires. I remember the back pains from when it is that I was doing, um, you know, the, the boxes in the, in the warehouse. And I said to myself, those things cannot give my family the lifestyle that they, that they need and right, they right. deserve. So this has to work. And one of the reasons why my wife did not want real estate spoken in the house was I would take her money to fund that because I wasn't making any money, right. <laughs> you know, for the three years. I would, you know, whenever she works, I would be like, yo, baby, I need $400 a month for this project. And, you know, she loves me. She's a beautiful girl. I love her to death. Um, and she would give me the money and I would spend, I lost, I wouldn't say lost. I invested right. thousands of dollars in the first three years and in the fourth year, um, my knowledge from all this money that I spent began to pay off. And that's when I began to use, I went to all different coaches, Tom Hopkins, um, Zig Ziglar. You know, I would go to every seminar. I would travel to Texas. I would go to San Diego. I would go wherever it it was just to meet these people that claim. Because in, back in 2005, you got to remember, there was no Facebook. There right. was no, you know, I, if there was YouTube, I didn't know about it. You know, I mean, for God's sakes, we were still on dial up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I remember I remember when I used to get excited whenever they would send um, AOL in the mail. Yeah. You know, internet, you know, I would be excited for that, man. You know? so, <laughs> yeah. So, so, that, so, so that was really the difference was me going after making a decision that this had to work. And, and um, yeah, it paid off. So then your wife comes into the business. I'm going to bring up a photo here. Yeah, that's my girl. Yeah, bring it up, guys. So she comes into the business. At, at, at what point does she say, okay, Pierre? And, I mean, they're never going to say that you're right. Let's, let's face it. No, right? that never she, happened. <laughs> that'll never happen. But yeah, yeah. at least she says, okay, I see an opportunity here. We can work okay. together. You know, and, and then what is that? dynamic like because i my wife's also in the business so i know a lot more than you know we have a lot of folks that we interview that they start out they become successful and then the spouse comes in so what are your some of your keys to success in having your wife as part of your team oh beautiful wow she's you know i'm not saying this because she's my wife i don't even know if she's on right now so i'm not gonna get any credit for this but she <laughs> is my support system my backbone she keeps me in line i'm a loose cannon if you didn't know that you should know that by now you know i shoot first and then i aim afterwards i have no <laughs> you know i i um there's no fear with me um she keeps me stable she keeps me in line and and i love her for that so um how she came into the business was 2010. So and she didn't come in willingly. She came in kicking and screaming. So <laughs> make sure there was, it wasn't that point where, oh no, this looks so beautiful. I need to come work with you. No, that didn't happen. What had happened was, um, she was working at her job, and and you know pretty much you know she got laid off. You know she had just made our second baby, Kaylee. That's my daughter, and you know we just bought the house and we bought this beautiful house over here in Laurelton. She's working. She's making a truckload of money. She's making a lot of money. I ain't, I said in real estate, she was making more money than me. That's why she could have said to me, "Don't speak about real estate." Right. And you know, so she made the baby, and I remember Hazel. <laughs> she made the baby. Yeah, she had the baby. <laughs> she had the baby, and she just went back out to work like immediately right after like weeks after the baby which you know which was weird um no, no time off and as soon as she went out a month later they pretty much laid her off she had no work oh, and my wow. wife been working since she was 16 too but she she has always been in a job you know she has never been on the entrepreneurial side i've always been on the entrepreneurial side doing the tailoring so for her it was like, you know, she, she was home for like a few days and she was like, you know, you know what to do. She was getting, she's losing her mind. She was frustrated. And I was like, wow, you know, um, and we had the baby and everything. And I just said to her, I said, you know what, could you come to my office with me? And could you come to work with me? And then she's like, to do what? And you should have seen her face though. Like, to do what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, just, you know, just go ahead and come, <laughs> just come over to the office. So she came, I was at Remax at the time. Then I had my own office, so she came, and I remember her. I remember her clearly. She came, she sat down. She was like this. <sighs> okay, so what do you do? That was that was her face exactly. What do you do here? And then I said to her, I said, "Well, just pick the phone up, call these names, and ask them if they want to buy a house." 
And she's like, okay. So I left her because, you know, she's like, okay, let me just figure this out. And I walked out. I went out. I came back that day. I kid you not. Six appointments. Six appointments that afternoon. I was like, what did you do? She's like, I don't know. And I just call them and ask them if they want to buy. And that's when we know the magic was. So she came the second day, the third day, the fourth day, and she has never left. Nice. She never left. Over 10 years later, she never left. Um, and that first year in the business, I kid you not, that's the first year she came in. We got the Remax Executive Club Award that first year. I uh -huh. never got it before that. When she came in, we got it. And that's when I said, okay, there's something here. And uh, we just launched off and we branded the Pierre team. And we've just been an awesome. ensemble force ever since. Here it is. The Pierre Home Selling Team Pierre is becoming a household name. Yeah. I like that. That's a good tagline, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was because of my girl, man. She really, she really came through for me on that. So, how did you weather the storm that 2008, 2009 storm in real estate, where the market just kind of, just kind of, did you go back to just prospecting, making it happen, same, just same thing you always did, right? Yeah, you know what it is, um, you know, for the three years, and that's why sometimes. The very same thing that comes to destroy you is the things that will deliver you. So in 2005, me not having mentors, me not having the guidance, I had to go out and get it. And as a result of that, I learned some really important fundamentals, some basics. So when the market dropped in 2008 and 2009, I had learned the fundamentals. I would learned that this is a people business. I would learned that this was a contact sport. And I would just get out there and just talk to people and connect with folks. And, um, you know, I started coaching with uh, Buffini. And so I started learning about building a sphere. And, um, yeah, and then, you know, so it didn't really affect me much. As a matter of fact, going into 2010, I was just getting better and better every year. Every year. And then 2010 was our breakout year. That was the year that we just, you know, we just, because she came in around that time. So 08 and 09. I was making money. I started making money um, in 08 and 09, to be, believe it or not. I was making money. I was making more money than I was she was making. So by the time she got, she lost her job, my wife, in 2000, around 2010, for her to come into the business, it was easier, not easy, but it was a little bit easier for her to say, okay, let me try this out because I had checks now. Right, you know, right. I had checks. As a matter of fact, before 2000, in 2009, I made one of my biggest checks ever. Mm -hmm one deal i closed and i made and at that time i made 30 grand and i brought that home i was like hey, yo. We're like yo honey <laughs> i'm like holla at me now man look at right here so um so yeah so i got her attention around that time that's excellent now you're you're into the speaking coaching side of things at at, at what point did you say i want to help out others or did somebody say yo pierre how did you do it? Help me to get to where you're at. Like, what point in your career did, did that start happening? Um, that happened. Whew, that happened about two years ago. And again, it's all about my girl. She did it again. You know, she, um, you know, I was, you know, well, so back up a little bit. One of the things I didn't really share was I was a youth pastor for 13 years. So for 13 years, I pastored youth in South Jamaica. Um, and I would preach it all on the subways. Jamaica Avenue, uh, go up the Bronx, you know, and I would just had, I had this big movement with all these kids, sometimes two, three, 400 kids, um, you know, I'll be preaching to and, 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 you know, helping them develop. So, you know, I was always in that mode of helping people, you know, you follow? And yeah. so for years I did that. <clears throat> and then um, about two years ago, I always tell my wife that, you know, I love real estate but I love helping people more. I love helping develop agents. And, and agents will always come to me and spend hours in my office and I'll just sit there with them and coach them up and train them up and you know, for no fee or anything. And then Hazel said to me, she says, okay, here's the deal. It's time, it's time to get some money. And that's how, that's how, that's how a virtuous woman is. That's how a woman who understands the value of her man is. She's like, listen, I appreciate you having that heart, but you have three kids and we have some goals. And and she's a very smart girl. She's like, listen, it's time to get, it's time for you to get paid now. So we're gonna figure out a way for you to get some money for all this free stuff that you're doing. So we um she 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 encouraged me to start coaching within my local office, Exit Realty. That's where I am now. 
Uh-huh. You know, I, st- I did a program, one program. I started off with uh, how to work with buyers because I was great at it. So I did it. And everyone was like just falling off their chairs like, oh, my God, this is amazing. This is amazing. Do it again. Do it again. I'm like, all right. So I did it again. And then it's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. This is amazing. Do it again. So I did it again. So then my brokers, you know, uh, they finally sat me down and they said, look, listen, uh, we need to talk about how we can bring this to the front. And we sat down. I got great brokers, great guys, great guys, Roman and Solomon. You know, they supported me throughout the years. And we sat down and we came up with a plan. And then they said, okay, bring this, bring this to the company. And this year, 2018, is the first year that it launched. You know, it's been about three years in the making, two years, just kind of like trial and error. And in 2018, we launched a coaching program at our office called GEM. And it has just been, it has just been amazing. It's just been amazing. And I thank my wife for starting that off. I thank my my brokers for really like giving me the platform to stand on, to do it. So um, that's how it started, man. And now it's um, it's on a whole nother level. It's on a whole nother level. So tell us what the acronym, the acronyms of real estate. What does GEM stand for again? Oh, beautiful. So I was sitting one day because I wanted to come up with the, the coaching program. Now, one of the things with me is I like to make things simple. For real estate agents, it has to be simple to understand. Like we're not complicated people. So if you can't make it simple, if I can't make it in a way for you to remember it, I'm not going to do it. So what I said was um, I need to have a program where real estate agents could remember what's the thing to be most successful in real estate. So GEM, real estate success in three simple steps. You see, if you're a new agent and you're just coming into the business, you wanna figure out, well, what do I do in this business? How to make money? So I give you the formula. Number one, the G stands for lead generation, okay? You could be as good as you wanna be, but if you don't have leads, you're not making money. After you generate the lead, the E stands for lead engagement. That's how we show you exactly how to follow up with all of the leads that you just generated using a certain level of sequences and a system that we use, we call CTEP. And then the M, it stands for lead manifestation. Now, manifestation really means, you know, the manifestation is bringing something that was in theory to life. So the manifestation of a lead is a contract or a check, right? So we show you how to do that by using voice inflections and dialogue. So G-E-M, lead generation, lead engagement, lead manifestation. If you do these three things every single day, you're gonna make money. Put it, we brought it up on the screen here. Ben Lavender, sitting here for president. Yeah, I paid him to say that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, ben Lavender is one of our, is one of our top uh, mortgage uh, bankers out here in Queens. I've been with them for six years. Great Thanks. bank, and I just love them. So I know we were talking one day, um, in one, of the, one of the last classes that I had with you, and you talked about one of the creative ideas that you do to bring the people to you, because there's a lot of people who might be watching this who are in Queens, and if you don't know in other parts of the country, if you're watching, Queens has a cease and desist uh, meaning they can't, they can't knock on doors, they can't call, they can't postcard, you can't really do anything. Am I right? Like outbound, it has to be inbound marketing per se. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> certain parts. There are certain areas that are still open um, that you can do it. But you know, Queens, man, it's the Wild West, man. You tell us not to do something, we do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, 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 but by law, <clears throat> you're not supposed to do it. So I started teaching agents that, well, what if it becomes the entire of Queens? Because there's certain pockets that you still could do it. But it's becoming a point where um, eventually it's going to blanket the entire area that you can't do not, you know? So um, what I what I came up with, there was a concept um, in a training that I did on that, that said how to stay relevant in a tech-savvy world is the reverse donor. Instead of you going out to the community, bring the community to you. You know, that's the, that, you know, one of the trainings that I'm doing is called an attractive base lead generating marketing, attractive base, you know, attracting the people that come to you. I find that when the leads come to you for your help, it's easier to convert them oh, than yeah. chasing them down, trying to like, you know, peekaboo, like, hey, you want to buy? Hey, you want to sell? You know, it gets annoying sometimes, but if you do it in such a way where they come to you for your help, if you become the authority in your neighborhood, 
you follow then it's easier to convert so the to the the reverse donor was i'll give you one idea that i had was every one of us have local supermarkets we all do now i've seen agents that put their face on the shopping carts they put their face on the billboard <laughs> like i'm not into that now i'll be honest i did it one time and it didn't work out okay mm -hmm. so that's why i know if you want to know what doesn't work you talk to me here's what i found that did work so <clears throat> People got to buy groceries all the time. So what you do is, is you go to the manager of any one of your local supermarkets and say, look, listen, I want to give somebody a $500 shopping spree. Is that okay? I'm going to buy you. If, the, if, you, if your grocery has like a, a shopping card, like some of them have the gift cards, you could buy it from them or you can get a voucher, whatever they give out. I want to give a $500 shopping spree. And then what the manager going to say? No, of course you're going to say yes. All I need from you is, I need about two hours in the parking lot, right? Where I'll be able to, people can come over and get a chance to win the shopping spree. Is that okay? And then what you do now is, is you go on Facebook, you go on LinkedIn, you go on YouTube and you start promoting, you know, for the community, only for the community. And you gotta be a resident and watch how cool this is now. So nobody don't come in. You gotta be a resident. Please come and show your ID, get a chance to get your ticket. And you don't need no money. You don't, they don't have to buy anything. They just have to sign up, right? It doesn't matter if they want to buy or sell. You're building a database now for, you know, and, and who's going to come out there? It's going to be homeowners or renters, whoever it is. There's going to be somebody coming out there that needs some help in real estate. You got your tent out there for two hours. You got a couple of people. You got a, you got the, the <clears throat> you got this little thing, um, like they got a spin or whatever. You know, whatever. You got to get creative. But the right. point is when we promote it on Facebook, two hours, come out here, get a chance to win a $500 uh, stop and shop. Uh, shopping spree, you're going to get people. And now you do that bad boy twice a month. If you pick up 500 people the first Saturday, another five the second Saturday, two things are happening. One, you got a thousand people in the database, but two, your face is becoming in the community. You're, pe you're meeting people, you're shaking hands, you're high fiving, you're giving little kids little candy, you're doing all kinds of stuff. Now you become the guy that when they think about real estate, they want to come to. So that's just one idea that we had. But that's the reverse door knock. Bring the community to you. Reverse door knocking. That is powerful stuff. Oh, man. So you talk about Facebook and marketing. Let's talk a little bit about social media and how you guys do what you do on social media. How Are you promoting it with ads? Are you targeting it? What's <clears throat> Yeah. Facebook, Facebook is a little bit of everything. You're going to have to run some ads. It's no question. Okay. Um, but what I found is engaging a lot of agents all they do is, all they do is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They, 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 they transmit, right? They transmit. But you also want to be a, a receiver. You also want to be a supporter. So, like, one of the things I do is, is I show interest in some of the things that my, you know, my clients or friends or whatever, like, don't just like. And I'll tell you why I don't just like on a post. Because sometimes the person that did the post don't see exactly that you like it. They, they may miss it. Right. Comment on it. Make a genuine comment on it. Share when it's something really big for them. You know, I see a lot of likes because like is the very easiest thing to do. To comment on somebody's uh, post takes a lot of work because you got to figure out the words. You got to do all that stuff, right? So uh, one of the things we do is engage a lot with our community. We talk back and forth with them. But we do run ads. You know, running ads is, you, you know, but we run nice ads, you know, fun ads, video ads. That's a big thing. I'm just doing a lot of video. J-Man talks a lot about videos. I know you, you know, that's like your area. I, I take my hats off to you on that. Um, but yeah, just video, funny videos. You do a lot of funny videos. I like that. Um, here's the secret to social media. I'm going to give the, this is the biggest secret. You guys ready? You got to have fun. got to have fun. Agents are way too serious on social media, way too serious. Always just listed, always just sold. I got my clients this house, keys, 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 keys. Ah, that's annoying. Have fun. You know, do some fun stuff. Do some crazy stuff. You know, tie it in with your real estate. I'm with that. But have more fun. You're too businessy on the social media, and it's just, it's just nauseous at times. Wait, so uh, what I'm hearing you say is that social media is social? Is that right? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. We missed that. You know, Ooh. social media is supposed to be social. They made it business media. You know, like you know, I like you know, gotta be fun, man. Gotta be social. Gotta be interactive. You know, that's great. I mean, and 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 bring up a good point as far as 
engaging with people on Facebook, it's like you have to actually read the post, formulate a response that shows that you actually care. It's not just good job, great job. You know, like you get those robots on, on Instagram that are responding to your Instagram post and they're saying great photo and it's a video. Yeah. You know, and I stuff like that. that. So it's annoying. Yeah. Agents are buying into that and they're spending a lot of money on all these products when all it takes is one hour in your day to sit down and go social. You could do it in the morning, you could do it in the afternoon, and then you can group your people on, on, on Facebook, you can group them on Instagram, the people that are important to you so you don't miss their post. And then you just sit down for an hour, man, and just like, oh, great, man, your son looks just like you. And rather than, great job, you know, say something nice. And right. once you do that, you know, they in return now feel like, oh, they owe you, man. Like, you know, peers always, you know, and not just great job comments, like real from the heart comments. You right. know, especially when they did something great in their in their in their life or in their career, get on there, man. Like I do it all the time, and my engagements is beautiful because when I do post something, one is funny. I'm always doing funny stuff. Number two, um, I, I like to give something that's either inspirational or motivational or something that that's the other thing too. Let me just side let me just side note here real quickly. Stop being over motion over motivational. You know, there's some agents that are trying to be Tony Robbins, like, you know, like, dude, like, chill out, man. Like, you know, just be yourself. Like, you're just, everything is motivation. And it's like, it's so intense. And it's like, you know, it's not cool, man. Just relax and, and do some other things too. But um, yeah, I, I, I like to engage with my, with my sphere and, and just be social. Let me just bring this up because I know you won't because uh, you're not this, this kind of guy. But I, I want to recognize you here for a moment. <laughs> The rising stars in real estate at the Long Island Board of Realtors, top 20 under 40. You're just making the cut here because you're about to be 40 soon. <laughs> man, shoot, man. They caught me. I'm about to be 40 at the end of this month. <laughs> you know, I was telling my wife, I was like, man, man, if they don't get me now, they ain't going to never get me. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy for that. You know, Kyle Kelly and those guys over at, um, at the YPN, and I'm I'm just honored that you know they they made the decision to, you know, to select me this year. It was just really it was really a great honor. You know, after investing 14 years, 100% in real estate, like I never left real estate. This is where I've been, and to get this after 14 years is beautiful. I really really appreciate it. So how is how is the YPN? And for those who don't know what that is, it's the Young Professionals Network. If you don't have one in your area, just reach out to us. We can help you establish one or find the closest one find a mentor within there because it's it's just the synergy everybody helping one another the collaboration no matter what company you're from somebody from the ypn network will be willing to help you it's not like we're competitors i can't share your information i mean pierre's on today there's people from queens from his that are his direct competitors that'll be listening today it that doesn't matter because he's he's here to help out somebody else right there's enough my friend Joe Sonona, who's listening now, says it all the time. There's enough for everybody to eat. That's and right. And get fat. <laughs> enough for everybody <laughs> to eat and get fat. So. Get fat. Yeah. All right. So we're going to wrap it up a little bit here. But I, I want to come back to family because in the end, that's all we have. Absolutely. But how do you find the balance? How do you find the balance? It's, it's, it's real simple, man. I make the choice. It's real simple. I'm not a complicated guy. It's a choice. You know, anything that you do in this life is a hundred percent choice. You know, um, you know, either you choose to make the choice or you choose to not make the choice and somebody else make the choice for you, it's still a choice. You choose not to make it. So my family, you see my kids right there, my little guy, he's chopped off in the bottom. He's told his birthday was last week. Um, you know, this is the old picture by the way. Um, but um, yeah, I, I love these guys, man. And I make the choice of some things like that are non-negotiables for me. They're non-negotiables. Number one, uh, family game night, non-negotiable. We do it at least twice a month. Yeah, that's my dude right there. <laughs> yeah, non-negotiable. We we um you know we have it twice a month. Um, we love vacations. We love um, resorts. So you know, once a quarter. Yeah, that's my princess. That's my sweetheart. You know the funny story about her? She 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 was saving money because she would get money for her birthday and whatnot. And yesterday she came in for Happy Father's Day in a rubber band with a note handwritten that says, I love you, Dad. She gave me $31, all the money in her piggy bank. Oh, man. Who could take oh, that, man? I just, man, 
Man, I gave her the money back and I carried her straight out to the toy store and bought a toy. She got a toy for Father's Day. Just be, I don't know if she tricked me, but it worked. But uh, <laughs> but um, but I love them, man. It's, just, it's a choice, Jay. It's a choice, really, to be honest with you. I'm not gonna over, um, you know, make a big thing about it. It's just a choice, and and that's how I strike the balance. I once I'm with my kids, you can't get me. It's just that simple. So and, like when um, when you schedule that. And you say like family game night and whatever. What if somebody calls and says, "Hey, I have a million dollar house to list." I wouldn't get the call because I don't get the phone. So. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that's that's another choice too. I you, you got to learn to separate from from the business. You know, I know. I'm telling you right now. I know if I have the phone and they call and tell me that they have a million dollar house to sell, I'm gonna sit on this call here and lie to you and tell you I'm not gonna go take that call. Okay. So yeah. I know if I don't have it. When I'm finished with the family game, then I go back. Look, listen, if somebody calls me and tells me they have a million dollar house to sell, I triple guarantee you they're gonna wait for me to call them back. I promise you that. Only the people that don't, the people that don't wait for you are the ones that you're chasing. The ones that come to you, right. you'll get them. So what I'm hearing is that you run your business, your business doesn't run you, right? Absolutely not. I'm full control. But it took 14 years. Eh? I wasn't always this way. And there are some days I don't always win. But but um, I run my business. I, I pretty much do it. Yeah. All right. So in in closing, what kind of advice would you give to young Pierre or just a new agent starting out, being all the knowledge, the experience, the expertise, the training that that you've experienced over you know over the years? What kind of advice would you give to a new agent or yourself, even just starting back into the business, to be successful? You know, because there's so many young agents that are starting right now and that. It's a challenge for them, depending on the market where they're at, and they don't know if they're going to stay in it or they don't know whether they're going to quit that full-time job to go full-time in real estate. What's the advice? The advice is DBS. DBS. There's three things you're going to do. DBS. Number one is, as a new agent, get designations. Straight out of the gate. Don't wait. You know, get out there, get designations. If you don't know what that is, reach out to your broker, but there's many of them, the ABR, CBR, the, the ABR, the GRI, SRS. There's so many of them. Um, get designated, get educated, because that's going to be the difference between you getting the listing and not getting the listing. That's the difference between you keeping a buyer and losing a buyer. So number one, you get designations. The B, branding. You got to become, you got to get branded. Um, there's many different websites. You got to brand yourself. Like, what type of agent are you? Are you a first time home buyer specialist? Are you a senior uh, um, residential specialist? Are you a certified residential specialist? Are you into foreclosures? Are you a military representative? You know, get, you know, you got to figure out what's your niche and then you got to brand yourself, right? Brand yourself within your community. Um, and we could, talk, you know, there's a whole list of things that you can do here, but get branded online, get reviews. I right? get a lot of reviews, Google reviews, Facebook reviews, Zillow, Yelp. I mean, just go on there, get video testimonials. If you see my site, I'm, I'm a big guy and just getting a bunch of testimonials. So that's the B, that's branding. And S is for your sphere of influence. You got to work your community. You got to get out there and, and, you know, be, you know, get into the president of your, of your kid's school. Do the supermarket thing that we talked about. Um, you know, I remember some of these rappers. If you look at some of these rappers um, that are big now, like 50 Cent, some of these guys, these guys were selling CDs out of the trunk of their cars. Right. Okay. I'm think I'm telling you right now, there is still value in that. We have gotten kind of hyped on the social media and how easy it is. But just like when email came out, email was a great tool, but now it's inundated and it's flushed with so much stuff that. You can't really get your message out in email and social media is the same way. So we got to kind of go back to in the community and get your mixtapes. You know, <laughs> you have no mixtape as a real estate agent, though. But, you know, get your little flyers or whatnot and go back to the trains, man. Just like, you know, just reach out and communicate and connect. But on um, work your sphere, doing the supermarket. There's some other things that you can do to DBS, get designated, start branding, work your sphere of influence. With those three things together, you're going to be good. All right, man. I'm going to give you a round of applause right here. <laughs> you guys listen to me, man. Spitting that fire today. Pierre, the home selling team. Uh, if you, Again, if you like our broadcast, just comment Millennia Who in the comments or a little message about we'll contact you to subscribe to the broadcast. Reach out to Pierre on Facebook. Is it Pierre home selling team? Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. right? That's yeah, right. you could reach out to them if you have any questions. Uh, but again, man, thank you so much. Really, really, truly appreciate it. This guy's a great guy. If you're looking to buy or sell in, in the New York City area, you should reach out to him. Appreciate and it. Just, if you're an agent, man, you, just this little bit, this is just the tip of the iceberg of what this guy knows. So really reach out to him and, and, and take your, your success and your career to the next level. So thank you, Pierre, so much. Thanks, Jay, man. I appreciate you. Everybody out there, make it a great day. It's Monday. Doesn't mean it's our first day because we've been working all weekend. That's right. So, Get back to it. All right, man. Take care.